Chicago's fiscal picture is less bleak than it was this time last year. That's the message from the mayor yesterday when she released figures that showed the coming year's budget to be about $733 million out of whack. That's down from a gap of $1.2 billion last year. Doing the math, this $733 million projected gap for 2022 is 40% less than the projected gap for this year, 2021, meaning that we have shifted from a pandemic budget to a recovery budget. And here to tell us what this all means for Chicagoans are Amanda Cass, Associate Director of the Government Finance Research Center at the University of Illinois Chicago, Emma Tai, Executive Director of United Working Families, a progressive group that works to put the concerns of working class families on the political agenda, and President of the Civic Federation, Lawrence Massal. Welcome all of you back to Chicago tonight. Good to see each and every one of you. Uh, let's dig right into the specifics here of this budget. So as we mentioned, $733 million deficit, $782 million in federal relief funds to plug uh, some of the holes here. $1 billion, the mayor says, in debt refinancing, and part of that is to pay $275 million in retroactive pay to police officers Amanda Cass, this $733 million gap, do you think that's an accurate reflection of where the city's finances are right now? I think it's a little difficult to tell given with the budget forecast document that was released yesterday. Um, I think we need to keep in mind that the budget forecast is really about agenda setting for the conversation about what the 2022 budget is going to be. Um, and we should view it as it's, it's a political document to kind of express what the mayor's priorities are, um, what the values are, what she sees as uh, what the city kind of should be spending its money on. Um, and the budget forecast, it's only looking at the corporate fund, which is just one of the city's funds. It's kind of the largest one. It's the discretionary one, but we're only getting a partial picture of the city's overall finance. Right. When we talk about the budget, we're usually talking about that corporate fund, fund which runs between like 10 and $12 billion, but these other obscure funds we don't hear much about. And uh, let's hear from Alderman Anthony Beal, uh, who was on the show last night, not really buying these numbers being put forth. When you look at everything that we're dealing with, we're dealing with a $700 million pension payment that is due and then you're looking at uh, the fact that the administration did not bond an additional 500 million that was authorized to bond uh, that we gave them last year. The administration is using federal CARES Act money for our day-to-day -day operation and they're robbing Peter to pay Paul. All of these are one-time solutions, one-time fixes that they're using. Uh, Emma Tai, one of the one-time solutions is using $780 million out of a little under $2 billion that came from the feds in this relief money. Uh, is this the right way to use that money? No, I don't think so. You know, in fact, there's an ordinance sitting in the budget committee right now. It's called the Chicago Rescue Plan Ordinance that has a detailed spending plan for how to spend the full $1.8 billion as the federal government intended and as is the morally right thing to do, which is on the communities who have been hit hardest by this pandemic. It provides hundreds of millions of dollars for child care for cash payments, for rental relief, for mental health services. These are the services that people desperately need and the fact that it's languishing in budget committee is unconscionable. And Lawrence Massal, uh, the alderman also mentioned the increased pension payments to the city's beleaguered pension funds up about $255 million this year. How sustainable is, is this payment schedule? Well, it's, it's a challenge. It's been a challenge for uh, both of the last two mayors and even the mayors before that, the rate of growth of the pension contributions. But that is mostly driven by the fact that full contributions have never been made to the pension funds because we are on legislative created statutory formulas. There's a big bunch, there's a big chunk of um, obligation that comes due again this year for the municipal and laborers pension fund because they are moving toward an actuarial um, calculated contribution instead of the statutorily ramp up that was established over the last um, five years. But the big challenge is we don't know what's going to happen next. We are not out of this pandemic. The economic recovery has not been complete. The downtown Chicago has not seen the rebound in hotels, restaurants, and other activities. We don't know what's going to happen in the convention industry, which is a big question mark. The city is not in a position to establish new programs that obligate it to spend money it doesn't have. Chicago is in a better place than it was a year ago because the federal government stepped up with the American Recovery um, Plan, the American Rescue Plan, 
and provided the city, as you said, almost $1.9 billion for two years. So, so if those and hotels those don't do better, up, we're out of money. high hospitality conventions, if they don't do better, that's a lot less uh, tax revenue coming into city coffers and could increase that budget gap. Um, so Amanda Cass, we also mentioned that uh, to pay this extra police cost, $275 million in back pay, the city's uh, mayor's office says they're going to refinance about a billion dollars in debt. So are you saying they're going to be able to find a really good interest rate where they can save a couple hundred million dollars just by refinancing debt? I think that so that's kind of one of the questions that I have and one of the things that I don't think was entirely clear in the in the forecast document. Um, and so again, the, with the kind of police costs, that's uh, the cost of a potential contract, right? So that's a contract that's in negotiation right now that hasn't been executed, right? Like, doesn't the city council have to vote on it? Well, they have to vote on the contract and it still has to be ratified by, by the police union membership. So yes, a lot of that stuff is up in the air. Um, right. and, so, yeah, so go there, ahead. So with um, Again, the, the budget should be kind of looked at as a, a document that's expressing kind of values and priorities. It's not a kind of bank statement um, that we might think of. And so budgeting for that is, it's budgeting for something that hasn't been fully kind of executed yet. Um, so I think that's kind of one issue with it. The other thing is, I think it's not entirely clear what the city's planning with the American Rescue Plan Act money, it can use the money for to make up for a revenue shortfall uh, and maintain operations. It can also use the money for uh, new programs, new initiatives, kind of reaching people who've been most affected by COVID. Uh, there's also the nearly $450 million from the CARES Act, uh, which I couldn't really kind of easily figure out how the city was using that money. Um, so I think that I have a lot of kind of questions about kind of figuring out the details of the plan. So a lot to still iron through. Uh, Lawrence Massal, the mayor is vowing no property tax hikes this year, save for $20 million or so tied to inflation. Do you buy that this budget can be balanced without a major property tax hike? I think they can, and they can especially this year because we have the benefit of that federal recovery money. The property tax increase that the mayor is holding the line on to an extent still allows for a um, increase in the overall levy tied to uh, the consumer price index. And so they're basically um, staying within the framework of their self-imposed cap. But the uh, the big challenge is, is, is in the out years. And really the two years that we have now with the federal um, funding should be used to make a plan for what happens next. What do we do long-term? The pension obligations are not going away. We are now, we're going to restructure for savings and it's great news that the city's not gonna use scoop and toss or they say they're not gonna use scoop and toss. We need to see the details on that borrowing. We are in an economic opportunity to um, borrow or refinance for savings, but you can only pull that rabbit out of the hat so many times. This is the second time the budget office has said they're going to use it. Now that they've received the revenue support from the feds, they, have, they didn't have to use it to close last year's budget. And, this is really the mid-year report that says we're doing better than we expected at the mid-year. It doesn't tell us how the mayor is going to fully close the 733 so the million. Message, I mean, the overarching message I'm getting here, this is not a final document here. A lot of things can still change. Uh, Emma Tai, the mayor uh, says she wants to use a lot of the recovering funds to address systemic inequities in the city of Chicago. Based on what we've seen so far from this budget release, uh, is the mayor holding to that promise? Yeah, I think we're looking at the classic case of rhetoric versus reality. I mean, that language sounds good to me, but a key talking point yesterday was $14 million for child care supports. You know, that sounds great until you realize that that CARES Act money, she spent $280 million of that CARES Act money on the police last time. And I think that, you know, frankly, we were hoping that in the midst of just a devastating summer and devastating violence numbers, this would be an opportunity to really evaluate how the city spends its dollars on public safety and violence prevention and to look at the money from the federal government as an opportunity to meaningfully invest in root cause solutions to violence. Chicago has more police per capita than any city in the United States. If more police made us safer, we'd be the safest city and that's clearly not the case. Um, so we're really just very disappointed in what we heard um, and looking forward to really working to produce a budget that is, as Amanda said, a moral document that reflects the, the city's obligations to uh, its people. 
All right, more to uh, dissect here over the coming weeks and months, and we hope to have all of you back to do that. But for now, our thanks to Amanda Cass, Emma Tai, and Lawrence Massal. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah.